Some breaking news now from Asia, Taiwan, saying that China flew 52 warplanes into its defense zone today. Beijing's largest such a uh, show of force, rather, ever. It's the third time, however, since Friday that China's air force has flown near the island, which it sees as a breakaway province, Taiwan. And it comes a day after the U.S. urged China to stop its provocations against Taiwan. General Jack Keane, chairman for the Institute of the Study of War and a Fox News senior strategic analyst. Nice to see you in person, sir. Good morning to you. Yeah. Department of Defense saying U.S. commitment to Taiwan is rock solid. That is just crossing at the moment. You've been watching these developments. What do you think Beijing's up to? Well, clearly, over the last year, there's been significant diplomatic, economic, and military intimidation of Taiwan. But it is no doubt... I mean, with 90 aircraft, uh, over 90 aircraft this weekend, 50 plus today, since the collapse of Afghanistan, it's been obvious. But President Xi has accelerated the military intimidation and as well as the psychological intimidation. They are blasting into Taiwan the fact that the United States did not defend adequately a 20 year ally in Afghanistan and walked away and surrendered the country. And that is what they're saying your fate will be as long as you stay aligned with the United States. So, yeah, this is, this is significant, which has taken place. I think President Xi is likely moving up the, I think, what his major objective is. And, he, and you know, when it comes to Xi, you got to pay attention to what he says. And he said time and time again, we're going to resolve this issue with Taiwan. If it has to be by force, it will be by force. And we're not going to pass this problem on to the next generation. So it's likely, I think, it may be moving forward in terms of his intent to accomplish that. Not in the near term, Olympics next year, National Party Congress next year. And that's what they have every five years, where they likely extend him again uh, in his, in his uh, tenure as, as the president. But yeah, this is getting to be a more so dangerous you're situation. You're saying invasion of Taiwan, which leads to an all out war. How many casualties, no one can say. And what would the United States do at that point? Yeah, well, that's a great question. I, I think he has three conditions that he's looking at. One, he has economic headwinds in the next five to 10 years. His economy is slowing down. He's got massive debt. His productivity is going down. And, and those are serious issues. And he's got huge democratic problems with his workforce. You know, with one baby uh, uh, only permitted in China for years, what that means, he's got 200 million people moving out of the workforce and into senior citizens to take care of over the next 10 years. Major issue for him. The other condition is that he knows that our allies, led by the United States, are retooling and upgutting their capabilities. But it's, no, it's going to take a number of years for us to do that. So there's a window of opportunity. And the last one is the one that you mentioned, Bill. The last condition is the United States. Will the United States come to Taiwan's assistance and actually defend Taiwan? That is a calculus which will influence his decision on whether to take action or not. That's just the facts of it. And what do you think the answer is to that? You know, when, when, the, when the Defense Department says our commitment is rock solid, do you think it is? You know, I'm just not sure. It has nothing to do with the Defense Department. It has to do with the decision maker. We just saw a, an awful strategic decision that led to the surrender of Afghanistan to a terrorist organization. And that decision is resident in one person, the President of the United States. So regardless of the Pentagon statements, and I appreciate those statements, mm -hmm. and certainly they are helpful, it really comes down to President Xi's assessment of President Biden. Mm. You're, you're talking about an event that would lead to the next world war. It, because the, you, now, now, General, the, the, the scenario you describe here, you force our Western European allies to take a side. You force our Southeast Asian allies to take a side. Australia, New Zealand, Korea, Japan. No, there's no doubt about that. And then, listen, there's been some good things done. President Trump started the Quad, the informal alliance in the region with Japan, Australia, India, and the United States. President Biden has strengthened that. Right now, as we speak, when all these aircraft are flying, yeah. we have two aircraft carriers in the region. The United Kingdom has an aircraft carrier, a new one, their only aircraft carrier, the Queen Elizabeth. And the Japanese have an amphibious helicopter carrier in the region. So we have presence, and that is also sending a signal, certainly, to the Chinese and, and particularly to their military leaders. But yes, this is going to be a, a crisis, I think, 
that is going to get worse before. Wow, it gets this is better. profound what you're saying here, General. We respect your views entirely. You know, but what we're describing here is the world going back to war at some point after 2022. I mean, that's profound. Xi is 68 years old, and you said at the beginning of this conversation, listen to what he says, and he has said repeatedly, repeatedly. that this issue will be resolved. He, he has a tendency to do what he says. Yeah. But he, it, it may not lead to the all-out war that you're thinking of. What he could do is prop down on one of Taiwan's islands, which is closer to the mainland, with military capability. What are we going to do? What? Are we going to react to that or not? My reaction to that, put military forces into Taiwan if he does that. He could blockade a major, a major port. All smallest steps to break the resolve and will of Taiwan. He could go for what I call a quick kill, and that is massive air and missile attack going after the National Command Authority and the elites inside of Taiwan and force a surrender very quickly in two to three days. Or he could do what you're suggesting is an all-out attack. Mm. And now he does have enough amphibious ships, he didn't have for a number of years, enough amphibious ships to conduct that invasion. He's, he's built a lot of commercial carriers, not just the gray hulls of, of his Navy, like we do. And we move our troops overseas, we use more commercial carriers than we right. do Navy hulls. And he's got all of that now. Well, you were, everything that you warned us about in Afghanistan came true, so uh, you are obviously worth listening to. Also, congratulations to you and your Yankees. Yeah, we're in, we're in for a fight. There's no doubt about it. We're going up to play the dreaded Boston Red Sox. God bless them. And we, and we, always, <laughs> we'll play, we always play good baseball. Well, I was happy And congratulations on 25 years of Fox. Right on. Yeah, thank God. you. Well, good thanks stuff. for being a, you're a big I'm part of it. I'm honored to be a part of it. You're a part of it. Thank you.